So we forgot our swimmers. And now we have to do the walk of shame back to the villa up these lovely stairs. It's a good workout. It's a great workout. <laughs> Don't let them see the code. Oh, <laughs> it's a push. <laughs> I always mess it up. Nice. Guys, this morning we're gonna go see some manta rays. Look at this beautiful morning. That's Mount Agung. Ew. It's a bridge. Yeah. And the usually the manta is always also here. Really? The black shadow? Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. I see. Oh, thanks, God. Oh, thanks God. Right there. They're above the water. They're right near the. You'd okay. see them popping out. Yeah. Fuck it's yeah. feeling so hot. She's seasick. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So when you sell all of that, how much you get normally? This one like uh, maybe five kilo? Five kilo maximum. Five kilo time ten thousand maybe. 10,000? So 50,000? 50,000 for just this. Mm. 50,000 for all that. And you get, you what to say, to carry this from the sea, need a boat. Before not like this, before maybe three times more. Wow. Because dry, it... It shrink. Yeah. Wow. So you needed to sell a motor yes. to do this? To buy the seed, the seaweed like, like that in, in Panida. So this is very medicinal. You can eat this for medicine. Yes, but after process. After process. Mm. The people here just dry and sell it. And who you sell to? The people. Local people come here to eat to each farmer and then make a deal of the price. Wow. Yeah, no choice. We have to sell it. Right, right. But when you were growing up, you, you didn't you didn't do seaweed? Yes, I do. Seaweed. You, you did when you were young? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Before tourists come in. Before tourists come. And then when tourists come, you do boats and change, change everything. Okay. Wow. So, so how how long ago? What? 
How long ago did you stop uh, seaweed and start tourist stuff? Five years? Ten years? No, no. Really? Yeah. 20 years? Yeah, 15, wow. 15 years. 15 years. That whole thing he sells for 50,000 rupiah. That's like basically five Australian dollars, like three and a half US for that whole thing. This one ready to, to, to put back. You put back to grow more? Yeah, my family has 2,000 pieces of this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. A lot now. You have a lot of seaweed but, now. But 1,000 broken. Wow. The yes. rope. Still the only the rope. Yeah. The, the seaweed gone. Plant. Yeah. Did not grow well. Die. Got it. So now just the rope there. Got it. Sad, sad. And, and so when you put this out there, how long does it take to uh, grow? One month. One month? Now we put back. In one month, in one month we, we pick up the same one, bring here. In, in one month, how big does that get? If, twice? If, yeah, if lucky, twice. Twice? Yes. Really? So we, get, we buy new new rope like that to process again. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. it takes a lot of seaweed to make all that in the back. It takes a lot. And then each of those grow double in a month. Yes. And before Corona, you, you, you didn't do this at all? Before Corona? Just long, just long, long time ago, before tourists, we do this. Yeah. But when tourists coming 15 years ago, 20 years ago? Yeah. No more. Wow. Everyone stopped with this. Yeah. Everyone? Yes. Really? And then when Corona, when Corona come, everyone start again? Yes. And wow. sell the everything. Yeah. Cool. Sometimes they, some people, they have gold, sell the gold. Yeah. Me have engine, sell to engine. Wow. We this. Let's hope wow. tourists come back soon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> there you go. Yeah? It's for you. Thank you. Thank you. When you leave, let the key. He'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Thank you for helping. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah. Thank Bye. you very much. Yeah. Bye, Sampa Jumpa. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. I just want to reiterate how crazy that is. So we just went on a little boat trip to go check out the manta rays and go diving near uh, Nusa Penida. And he was telling us that right now there's a dog barking at me. So he was telling us that when Corona hit, he had to switch back to harvesting seaweed. And before Corona, he hasn't had to do that for like 15, 20 years, because it was about 15 or 20 years ago that tourism started to come to this, this island in particular, Lombongan. So he bought a boat and he's been doing tourist activities to kind of make a living, fishing and manta ray diving and just scuba diving and snorkeling and things like that. Ever since Corona hit, he said that every one of the farmers there had to switch back to what they were doing 15, 20 years ago, which is harvesting and producing seaweed. And so that big plot of seaweed that, that I showed you, it takes him a month to grow that. And he only gets 50,000 rupiah, which is like $4, four US dollars. So it takes him a month to grow just that plot of seaweed and he sells it for basically four dollars fifty thousand rupiah so it's it's super crazy the amount that we just gave him was five hundred thousand each so that's a million rupiah which is about seventy five dollars total and we just gave him that on one fishing trip that he just got this morning and yet it would take him the equivalent of 20 months worth of work growing and harvesting seaweed to make that same amount. It's absolutely insane the impact that Corona has had on these people's lives. They've had to resort back to what they were doing before the tourists came here, which is sometimes it's harvesting rice, other times it's harvesting seaweed. This dog is really annoying me. <laughs> he was basically saying that they haven't had a choice. There's been no choice. So it's just really wild to see the impact of it. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of like discounted prices here. There's a lot of things that are cheaper than normal, like villas and real estate and things like that. Um, but for that particular one, we didn't want to barter. You know, in a sense, you can kind of tell when someone is not so well off. Some Balinese are more well off than others. You know, we didn't want to like say, oh, can we have 400,000 or, or try to get 300,000 per person instead of 500,000 because you can tell that, you know, some people just need it and he definitely needed it. He was saying that 
um, you know, when he doesn't get paid, when he doesn't have tourists come, he can't buy anything for his children. He can't buy even like meals. He said when he gets jobs uh, in the baby bottle that he has for his kids, he can put like milk there. But when he doesn't get jobs, he just puts water. It's crazy how impoverished some of these people are and how much just one day's worth of work doing tourism is like 20 months worth of work doing what they were doing before, whether it's harvesting rice or algae. So we were really thankful to, uh, to pay the normal price, the pre-COVID price uh, for this guy because he was very happy and you could tell that his kids were happy as well, you know, because they knew that he was, gonna, he was gonna buy him something good, you know, whether it's a toy or just food, but they were very, very grateful. And uh, to see the smiles on their faces, when you're, when you, you know, give them money, it's just like, it's priceless. It's worth every penny, for sure. Because like, to us, $70 is like nothing. And to them, it's like everything. And that's just the wild part, is how little some of these things may mean to us, but how it means the world to them. That right there is Mount Agung. We haven't seen it that well for a few days because there's been so many clouds, but uh, super beautiful we get to see it today. Check that out. So I'm sure you guys saw the, uh, the offering that he put in the water right before we dove. And I just wanted to explain a little bit about what that is over here in Bali. The original story of what that is, is uh, back in like the ninth century before Bali was inhabited by pretty much anyone, back when it was like really wild. And the only thing that was here was tribes basically, tribes of the indigenous, like original Balinese. There were a few settlers that tried to come and, and colonize the island or more so develop it at least. This is before even colonization happened and so there was this guy he was an Indonesian that was coming to this island that was trying to develop here this is before like the Dutch settlements and everything and uh, he tried to build on the island but he ran into problems left and right it seemed like no matter what he tried to do here he couldn't build it wasn't successful he always ran into obstacles he always ran into a roadblock and so he went back to his island somewhere else in modern-day Indonesia and um, meditated on what happened and what was wrong and what he needed to do to fix it. And what came to him when he was meditating was that he didn't give an offering to the lands. He didn't first ask the lands if he can build and if he can develop here. And he didn't ask for permission and give an offering to the land, to the gods uh, before developing. And so what he did is he came back actually after his first unsuccessful trip on building on Bali. Again, this is back in the ninth century. So this is like 900 AD. And when he came back the second time, what he started to do is he started to give offerings to the land in the form of, you know, what, I don't know what it was back then, but in the form of today, it's uh, like a banana leaf, if you will, that has a bunch of flowers inside. Sometimes it has tobacco. Sometimes it has like a little cookie or like gum or something like that and they give offerings to the gods you know they ask for permission hey can I come here hey can I can I settle here can I have this experience and um, after that happened to the man in the ninth century and he came back the second time and he gave offerings to the land and offerings to the gods everything was smooth and so he was able to develop and he was able to build and he was able to basically you know uh, help Bali become what it is that we see today and so what he did with the local Balinese of the time the local indigenous of the time is he showed them the importance of giving offerings to the land giving thanks to the land, asking for permission, hey, can I come here? Hey, can I build here? You know, is it okay for me to do this? Instead of just taking and instead of just saying, oh, this is mine or this is my land and I'm just gonna do this, they, um, they ask for permission first. They ask for permission from their gods and they ask for permission from the land if they can settle here or if they can do this. So what you guys were seeing earlier before we saw the manta rays was he brought offerings with him, these little, you know, uh, banana leaf little offerings with flowers inside and things like that. And um, what happened was he put them down on the water. He put an offering down on the water and he said a little prayer and he was basically asking for permission if we can see the manta rays and, and giving an offering before asking 
if we can see the manta rays, you know? It's just such a different environment than what we're used to in the West. You know, so many people are so used to taking and so many people are used to saying this is mine and this is my land or this is my whatever, you know? Whereas in Bali, they don't do that. They, they, they give first before they receive because they know true abundance is giving first before you receive. Instead of just taking and taking and taking, the, the people that we most admire in this world, the people that we most respect, are the people that first give because they know it's only when you give you will ultimately end up receiving. This is the reason why you see a lot of selfish people in life, like they don't do too well, right? Because uh, they're, not, they're not giving first, they're not, they're not providing first, they're taking and they're just taking and it's just this me, me, me kind of attitude and it's, it's self-centric and it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't create a happy or fulfilling or meaningful life, right? So um, the Balinese way is just, it's so beautiful because they know that in order to first receive, you need to give. You need to give your offering. You need to uh, give an offering to the gods and you need to ask for permission. Hey, is it okay that we dive here? And uh, what do you know? He gives this offering and within 20 minutes later, we find our manta rays and we have this beautiful manta ray diving experience. So it's a, it's a beautiful little reminder to uh, especially if things aren't going your way in life. Instead of just thinking about yourself and instead of just taking and taking and taking, give first, you know? And watch your entire life transform.